There are three forms of uh, atmospheric circulation. One that takes place at the primary level, which is called as a called by the name of planetary wind belts, uh, which is going to be called by the name of planetary circulation or global circulation. The second is uh, going to be secondary atmospheric circulation that picks up uh, cyclones and anticyclones and cyclones including two of them, that is tropical cyclones and temperate cyclones. At the third level lies uh, the tertiary atmospheric circulation. Tertiary atmospheric circulation goes on to include uh, components uh, associated with local winds, uh, urban heat uh, exchange uh, and uh, some of those thunderstorms and tornadoes as well. There are three ways in which it takes place. One of uh, the forms of uh, atmospheric circulation, particularly secondary atmospheric circulation, is tropical cyclones. There are four aspects of tropical cyclones that requires to be studied. The first is uh, what are tropical cyclones? The second is uh, how is it that these tropical cyclones are known in different places and how is it that they are named? The third is uh, going to be the causes of the formation of the tropical cyclone and the mechanism of its formation. The fourth is uh, the structure. The fifth is uh, the movement of the tropical cyclone. And the last is the effect of tropical cyclone. Of course, we'll go on to end up this chapter by discussing about the difference between the tropical and the temperate cyclones. Tropical cyclones, in fact, includes all cyclonic circulations originating over tropical waters. Tropical cyclones are intense low pressure areas, usually some 160 to 800 kilometers in diameter, in which violent winds with maximum wind speeds in excess of 6 to 3 knots blow towards the center. That is, the wind speed is very, very high. The flow of air is anticlockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. The World Meteorological Organization, World WMO, has classified these tropical disturbances into three parts. Not all of these disturbances are called as tropical cyclones and not all tropical cyclones are actually tropical depressions or storms. There is a specific name given to all the three different types of uh, circulations or disturbances that originate over the tropical waters. Uh, one of them is uh, a tropical depression. A tropical depression, as the name suggests, is a depression. That means it's a low pressure system. A tropical depression is a system with low pressure enclosed within few isobars, not too many isobars, few isobars. That means uh, the pressure gradient in this case is low and consequently because the pressure gradient is low therefore uh, it will also go on to be having an effect on the wind velocity. There are numerous such type of tropical depressions that originate uh, in uh, the oceans. Uh, some of those people who have observed it uh, there are good number of such type of tropical depressions originate uh, in uh, India or over the Bay of Bengal region. Uh, which go on to sometimes cross India, sometimes they go on to take the form of a tropical cyclone and graduate into, they go on to take the form of a tropical storm and then graduate into tropical cyclone. The second is a tropical storm. A tropical storm is a system with several closed isobars eh, and a wind circulation from eh, 17 to 32 meter per second. Tropical cyclones, eh, they are the third one. Tropical cyclones are warm, core, vortex circulation, often of an approximately circular shape, eh, that, is, eh, uh, that is this type of a shape, completely circular, like that of a spiral galaxy, with a minimum surface pressure that is less than 900 millibars, eh, that is the surface pressure, and a sustained wind speed of at least 33 meter per second, that is the wind speed goes on to be 33 meter per second doesn't go on to be coming downward at all and torrential rains and sometimes accompanied by thunderstorm. So it does go on to be having such type of a rain like a, as we can go on to think of describing it, it going to look like someone going, as someone has opened a horse pipe from the sky and of course it is a, a thunderstorm as well. So the wind speed in this case is very high and that is in excess of 118 kilometers per hour. Of course, uh, the maximum wind speed in this case can go on to reach almost up to as much as uh, 340 kilometers an hour. 
These tropical cyclones are given different names in different places. For example, they are called as a hurricanes in the Caribbean Sea, typhoons in the China Sea, typhoon in Japan, and Baguio in the Philippines. They are going to be called by the name of cyclones in the Indian Ocean, willy willies in, in uh, Australia. These are the other names that have been given to them. Tropical cyclones are named to provide ease of communication between the forecaster and the general public. That is, the one cyclone that affected India in December 2017, okay, that has been named by Bangladesh, and that means I. The second component associated with tropical cyclone is associated with the formation of a tropical cyclone. Fuziwara, who went on to describe how is it that the tropical cyclones going to form, and he in fact created a mechanism for the dynamic modeling of the tropical cyclones. Various conditions need to be fulfilled for tropical cyclones to develop. One of these conditions going to be the first is suitable source of sensible and latent heat. Tropical cyclones form only over warm waters that have temperature of at least 26 degrees centigrade and preferably over 26 7 degrees centigrade. This ensures sufficient evaporation and a source of moisture. The moisture thus provides the necessary latent heat. Higher the moisture content, higher the amount of latent heat in the air. When condensation and precipitation occur at upper levels, massive amount of latent heat is released and this maintains the supply of energy for the storm. The tropical waters are warmest in late summer and early autumn and it is during this season that tropical cyclones mostly form. The main reason for the lack of tropical cyclones in South Atlantic and Eastern South Pacific Ocean, Southern Atlantic and Eastern South Pacific Ocean is the presence of cool ocean currents. Anywhere, wherever there are cool ocean currents, tropical cyclones won't form. Second of them is the depth of warm water. The warm water conditions must be extending from the top to a depth of 60 to 70 meters. The third is the high humidity level. Humidity level in the mid troposphere must be high as the entrainment of moisture, that is entrapment, almost entra entrapment, eh? entrainment of moisture will lead to cumulonimbus cloud. If dry air is entrained, it will inhibit cumulonimbus cloud formation. Cumulonimbus convection will not occur even in oceanic area when the relative humidity of mid tropospheric air is eh, less than 50 to 60 eh? percent. The fourth is the presence of pre-existing low-level disturbances. Now, this is being talked about in the sense that is, let's say that all these three factors are going to be present. The pre-existing low-level disturbance is going to provide a triggering mechanism for the formation of these cyclones. Easterly waves say go on to function in the form of pressing the trigger. And once this trigger is formed, then uh, all the conditions that are required for initial organization to prompt convergence that starts taking place. Fifth is disturbances in the upper atmosphere. Low level disturbances alone are not sufficient for tropical cyclone development. There must be disturbance in the upper atmosphere as well. That is, uh, all the air that is going to be converging on the, on the bottom that must go on to get itself diverse on the top. There must be disturbance in this is called as disturbance in the upper troposphere. One of the most in common upper tropospheric disturbances that leads to tropical cyclone development is associated with the dying remains of an upper tropospheric cyclone wave from westerlies or the dying remains of the Raspi waves. When these waves move deep into the tropics, they are abundant by the westerlies and certain features of it promote tropical cyclone development. The six is Coriolis parameter. The Coriolis parameter must exceed a certain critical value. The Coriolis force has a value of zero at the equator but increases rapidly with the sign of the latitude. So it's zero at the equator, it's 90 degrees on the top. It is only when uh, the Coriolis force exceeds uh, 10 to the power 5 per second in magnitude which does not occur until 5 degree latitude that the Coriolis force is strong enough to lead to the development of cyclonic vortex. The maximum cyclonic development takes place around 15 degree latitude. 
between 10 to 20 degree latitude, 65% of the world tropical cyclones develop. The seventh is minimum vertical wind shear. This is one part that we had discussed while discussing with jet stream. That is, jet streams are associated with a shearing of the wind. The vertical wind shear between the upper and lower troposphere must be minimal. Tropical cyclones can only form when the wind is uniform at most heights through the troposphere. It is the absence of this feature that inhibits tropical cyclone formation near Hawaii, where most of the time warm water and Coriolis force, both of them are present. Similarly, the strong summertime upper tropospheric history is south of Asia and India suppresses cyclone formation when the monsoons are peaking in July and August. That is the eighth factor. There must be well-developed divergence in the upper troposphere because the pressure will fall at the surface only when the outflow from the system aloft exceeds the surface inflow. It's not that every tropical cyclone will go on to develop itself into a full-blown tropical cyclone. All of these may develop in the form of a depression. They may go on to move into a storm and gradually that will go on to graduate itself into a tropical cyclone.